boy. You that boy. You that boy. You that boy. You that boy. It started on Monday of last week. You had great resolve. You had great effort in practice. You prepared hard and you strained. Okay, and it took it took 64 minutes. Where's AJ Cole at? Come on, AJ Cole. This group, you should believe in yourself. Okay, I'm just telling you, you just got to believe in one another. You got to keep getting better. We got to keep working at it. It's been a long season. It's November. Oh. It's Thanksgiving week. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, no. We got a victory. Ah! Damn it, feels good to be a Raider. Uh, uh, what's up, Raider Nation? It's your boy, Mikey Raider. This is my post game review. Of the Denver Broncos versus the Las Vegas Raiders Cringe Bowl, as I called it. As you can see on screen, we got a lot of talk about. We're going to go over the post-game stats from my perspective. We're going to look at some press conferences. We're going to decode what the hell the coaches and players are saying. Probably going to be a lot better than it was last week when we had the crying game. We're also going to talk about Mark Davis. I have an update to a Mark Davis story. And what else are we going to do? I don't know. We're just going to talk. How about that? It's Thanksgiving. We got a victory. We probably don't have a lot of those ahead of us. And a lot more, hopefully not any more drama moving forward. Whatever. Let's just have a good post-game review. All right, let's get it started. Please hit that thumbs up, that like, that subscribe button. Let everybody know you enjoy Mikey Raiders content. You like listening to my dumb ass? I appreciate it. Love you guys. Here we go. The Las Vegas Raiders beat the 3-7. and seven. <laughs> Las Vegas Raiders beat the Denver Donkeys, who are also 3-7 and seven and struggling. Our quarterback after last week was broken. Their quarterback is in cringe bowl and outspoken. What could have happened this week? Could it have been another loss for the Raiders? It could have been. But the Raiders salvaged up enough band-aids to not save their season but to save their souls. This was a Band-Aid game. So for maybe two or three or four days, the media is not going to clamor on Derek Carr, Devontae Adams, Josh McDaniels, Mark Davis, whatever else is going on in the world. This game was a Band-Aid. Did it fix anything? Not a goddamn thing. For Raider fans and Raider Nation, we know the truth. We watch this yearly. This year just feels worse. Because of all the pride and the new additions and the, and the talk coming in and the pedigree from coaches. What happened? Everything. We can blame everything and nothing. But it feels good to get a victory. At least to be thankful for that. And as you guys saw in that locker room speech video, it mended a lot of souls. I'm going to say every soul on the Raiders. Did it fix all the issues? No, they're still there. It's a Band-Aid game. But that's okay. Sometimes Band-Aids make people feel better so they don't have to see the scar or the blood underneath the Band-Aid. So for a few days at least, we don't have to see the blood and scars from our truly, truly struggling and bad team. 
That's just honesty, guys. Just honesty. All right. I like to do this for some darn reason. Maybe because I think of myself as a fashion icon. But let's watch the Raiders arrive and let's look at their clothing. And either make fun of it. Look at it. I mean, you can make fun of me. I, I'm basically naked underneath this sweater. You guys can't see it because it cuts it down here. Let's talk about, but let's talk about the Raiders' arrival and their clothing. Let's do it. In Power Stadium. Okay. There's Derek Carr. What did, what did he wear? I couldn't really see it. Black. Okay. Good thing it wasn't his his shoulders full of tears. Um, he's on bus number two. You would think he'd be on bus number one if he's the quarterback of the team leading the bus, but he's on bus number two. <laughs> he's on bus number two, but he's wearing like a members only jacket. Traditional. Got the headphones in. He gonna, he gonna be a male model when he's done with the Raiders or his career. He gonna be a model. He'll do some modeling events for the NFL. The NFL will make a modeling crew since they don't pay the cheerleaders. All right, who's next? I don't really know who that is. Forgive me, I'm not gonna know every player by their face, but that looked like Mac Hollins. He's wearing orange um, in support of Trump. And I, don't, I can't really see the logo. It's not too big on screen. But hey, it's got a nice color combination. If it's October for Halloween, orange and black, maybe he thought this was going to be another scary day in Denver. I mean, come to think about it, is he wearing the Denver colors? Maybe not completely, but ha why the hell would you even wear orange? Come on, Mac Hollins. I should smack you, Hollins. All right, we got some shoes and a bag. They want to represent Nike and all the sweat camps in China. All right, that looks like Devontae Adams. He covers up everything. He's just a... He's just black. <laughs> And I don't mean no disrespect by that. I just look, look, his entire outfit, black, with a little bit of white logo in the front. He's got the shades on, too. He's, the shades are black, and he's hiding himself from the world. Devontae Adams, man, he's a tough cookie. He don't like the press. He just, he's just going about his business. Interesting. All right. I skipped somebody. I, I forgot who that was. I don't know who that is. Those are cool headphones. Got the gold chains. Uh, can't really tell who it is. Forgive me, guys. It's a nice outfit. I actually like that outfit. I think that's a suave outfit for showing up for game day. There you go. Representing Raiders. Again, I don't know who it is. Forgive me. It might be a mirror of Boudoula, Brandon Bolin. But that's a, that's a cool outfit. I would represent that outfit on game day. You would think the quarterback and other players would represent that outfit. But not a lot of pride for the Raiders recently. Plus, do they get that gear free? I mean, if you get the gear free from the Raiders, you might as well wear Raiders all the time. But I feel you. Sometimes recently, we don't want to wear Raiders. We, we're like, eh. There we go. We got the Max Crosby. Everybody wearing black. It's been a dark time for the Raiders. <laughs> been a dark time for the Raiders. Black is in, in the town of Sin, for the Sin City, Las Vegas Raiders. Max Crosby, what, he go, what? Look at that, what? And then he smiled and laughed, having a good time. That's good. His spirits are with him. Is that Deron Harmon? Looks like him wearing Raider gear for the Patriots. I mean, former Patriot. That looks like Deron Harmon. I don't know what that was. Illuminati, what? I don't know. All right. Boy, black is in. Now we got the puffy jacket since it's a little bit cold. And, and the chain. Got the puffy jacket. There's Josh Jacobs. That looks like a homemade Raider logo with the, with the, with the, 
the swords and like a, a skull. Is that Josh Jacobs? Oh, that I don't think that's Josh Jacobs. Forgive me. Now that I look a little closer. Everybody's wearing black. Can't tell the difference. Black and white, but it looks like a Raider type logo. Be careful with that. The Raiders can sue you and trademark you for that logo. They own the trademark to the two any two swords crossed on any merchandise. I'm just letting you know. Just letting you know. That might have been there's Foster Moreau. See, that's a cool. I like that. Changing it up. He's got the brown Raider gear, like military. Salute to service, Foster Moreau. I like that. That's a good look. That AJ Cole, I believe. I think that's a Texas A&M shirt. But he's wearing all white. The Colton Miller, I don't know. The Andre James, maybe all black. Uh, Daniel Carson. Again, I, I can't tell everybody. These are simple. That's a weird. That's a nice two-tone jacket. What does that say? Cartel. Is that Shocker? That movie Shocker. Remember where the guy, the guy gets shocked to death or killed in prison or something, and then he comes back to life. Shocker. It's a good movie. I don't know who that was. I don't know what gear. Basic, a nice little puff jacket. I like the tie-dye in the background. I like colors. I mean, I know we're silver and black, and you always want to wear silver and black, but, you know, we got to have some colors sometimes. Just let everybody know we're alive and we're here. There you go. That's Amir Abdul. Not Amir Abdul. Amik Robinson. He's been the media darling for Raiders.com when we've been losing because he keeps his spirits up and he doesn't let his emotions flow. So they put him on every damn video. But that's a, a, a Meek Robinson. Been doing the rounds. Trying to make the Raiders look as good as possible during dark times. Wearing Raider gear. Licking his lips. Oh, he's getting ready for a victory. Mm -hmm. It's going to taste good to get a victory. We're going to eat a dub. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? James Winston? We're going to eat a dub on now, I believe that's Andre James wearing Gucci, and it has orange in it. You shouldn't never wear orange to another team, but I guess you're wearing Gucci. I could only afford Gucci, and Gucci is still expensive. Two media elevator. He's walking away from the media elevator. All right, he got some nice little diamonds across the chest, diamonds across the chest, and a simple trucker hat that's a cool outfit and i don't want to say at a stadium i don't care so there it is for the fashion that was the fashion from the raiders i'd rather more fashionably vic victories fashionable victories but hey all right let's get into the game raiders won 22 to 16 in overtime let's look at the stats Break them down for a split second or two. Then we'll talk about some of the game calls and the plays and what happened. Raiders had 20 first downs to the Denver 19. 10 passing first downs to Denver's 11. Rushing first downs, 8, almost even, to 6. First down from penalties, we got 2. They got 2. Third down efficiency, ain't so good. 311. 3 for 11. They were 3 for 12. Fourth down efficiency, we didn't go for it on 4th. That's a shocker with Josh McDaniels in trick plays. Total plays, I can't read it. I think it says 62 to 62. Total yards, for 407, 329. Total drives, 10 to 10. It was an evil game. Even game. An evil game. It was an evil game. But the Raiders came out and prepared. <laughs> yards per play, 6.6. .6. We had 407 yards. They had, what, 329? It's kind of hard to read. Got bad eyes. Yards per play, 6.6. .6. Average, 5.2 for them. Passing 298, just a shy of 300. But I thought Derek Carr threw for 300. I don't know. 228 for them. Completion, 23-37, 24-31. Yards per pass, 8 yards. It's not bad. If you can be over 8 yards, that's a good... Yards per pass average. They were 6 for 6. No interceptions. Derek Carr was sacked. And yards lost once. Russell Wilson was sacked three times for 21-yard loss. 
Rushing, we had 106 yards, 109 yards. I thought he had 160. Uh, Josh Jacobs. Look, this is weird. Rushing attempts 24. They had they were held under 100. Rushing attempts 24, 26 yards per rush, 4.5. They were 3.4. The red zone made and attempted. I can't really read that. Is that a three or a zero to one red zone made an attempt? I guess we weren't in the red zone. We were 0 for 1 in the red zone. Uh, they were 1 for 2. Penalties, 9 for 98. Wow. I'm, those penalties, man. 5 for 45 for them. Turnovers, none officially. Uh, special teams, touchdown, 0. Possession, we held it for 32, 38. And they held it for like 28. It was a pretty even game from the stats, guys. For the Broncos and for the Raiders. Let's get that right. Let's look at Derek Carr's passing, because that's what everybody wants to creep about. He, they said he hasn't went over 300 yards in many months as he was being critiqued this past week. Derek Carr was 23 for 37, 3 0 sheet, two touchdowns, one for nine, with a quarterback rating of 75.3. Russell Wilson, I don't have the stats on the screen. I don't care, but I think he had like 250 yards, uh, no touchdowns from Russell Wilson. Josh Jacobs. 24 carries for 109 yards. Oh, maybe he had 160 total yards with receiving. His longest was for 15. Okay. These are good stats for Derek Carr. But if Derek Carr has to throw the ball 40 times a game and only completes 23, is he still struggling in a sense? The team is not balanced. And that's one thing I wanted to speak on. The team is not that balanced. Let's be honest with you. It is not that balanced. Even though it looked like we were because we had a good run game and we completed some big pass plays. But let's think about who was catching the ball and what and where and when. Let's look at the Raiders receiving. Devontae Adams, seven. He was probably targeted ten times. 141, two touchdowns, along of 35, 13 targets, well, even more. Matt Collins, targeted nine times for six receptions for 52 yards. Josh Jacobs for three, 51, long of 43. Foster Moreau, Foster Moreau didn't have a catch till overtime. It's insane. Keelan Cole, one for 21. Amir Abdullah, blah, blah, blah. We got nobody. Well, it's because Waller's out. It's because Hunter Renfro injured. Look, I don't care. The damn... And again, this is possible criticism of Derek Carr. I hate comparing him to like Patrick Mahomes. But, I mean, Patrick Mahomes, everybody that comes in becomes a stud or a star or they win him the game or they all make plays. We had Devontae Adams make plays. Foster Moreau made that one play in overtime to get us down the field, but it was all basically Devontae Adams. And, of course, Josh Jacobs, you know, in the run game. And it sucks to not have all of our weapons, but I'm just tired of making that an excuse for either Derek Carr or the coaches. I don't know what's up. Uh... The damn Chiefs, everybody becomes a star and everybody gets, you know, makes plays and everything. And it's just, Derek Carr is basically targeting Devontae Adams almost on every play. And good thing that they move him around the field to get open. And, you know, he's made some good juke moves and made some big plays. But, I mean, you don't catch a ball in the second half until overtime? To win us the game or till the end of overtime? I mean, you catch like, what, six or seven balls in the first half and then you don't have a, a catch? I know you dropped the ball earlier, but still, Derek Carr, too focused on one player. And the other players, Derek Carr's not trusting them. The play calling doesn't allow for players out of the backfield. And in my opinion, and this is on Josh McDaniels as well as Derek Carr, 
The play calling is suspect on many, many times. There was a, a point in the game where it was like second and six. And they ran the ball with Jacobs, which is fine. They, you know, they probably wanted to get three, four, five yards if they could on second and six. But look, it was like near midfield. It was like late in the third quarter or early in the fourth. But it was second and six and they ran the ball. Okay, he got stuffed. It's third and six. Now, you would think it's third and six at midfield, like at the 45. We only need like six yards to get a first down. We're driving. Put all of our receivers, whether it be Devontae Adams, Matt Collins, Josh Jacobs out of the backfield, put all of our receivers in a quick route as we know they're probably going to blitz Derek Carr. And they're going to cover the five or six yards with their linebackers. But we need five or six yards. So let's maybe get some routes that are like five yards, four yards, and maybe a route that's like seven or eight, seven or eight yards. So I was watching this play, and I'm like, all right, they're going to get all the receivers within the five to eight yard range to get a first down. They only put one receiver in a cross route at five yards. And who was that? Devontae Adams. The other two receivers went deep. Literally went deep. And Josh Jacobs stayed in there to pass block. Foster Moreau stayed in there to pass block. So it's third and six. Receivers should be in five to eight yard range. We know they're going to blitz Carr. And, you know, you made a play where Foster Moreau is going to block. And uh, Josh Jacobs is going to stay in there to block any blitz. So those receivers should be having crossing routes or quick outs so they can make a move and Derek and Carr can trust one of them. But no. Devontae Adams is the only guy that runs across the middle and he's triple double covered into linebackers. So then Derek Carr takes a shot at Mac Hollins. 25 yards deep. Oh! On third and six. On the sidelines. That's play calling. Derek Carr had no, he couldn't go to Devontae. He was double triple covered in the middle of the field. Derek Carr's afraid of an interception. And the, the, the only other two outlets in that play call was Keelan Cole and Mac Hollins, and they were running sideline, 20-yard deeps. That proves we're missing a Julian Edelman type in that system. We're missing a Hunter Renfro. But still, the play calling could have put Keelan Cole or Josh Jacobs or Jacob Johnson five yards away to give Derek Carr an outlet. Instead, the two wide receivers went deep and only Devontae Adams across the middle on third and six. Just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. That goes to play calling. Derek Carr not having any options. Let's look at the defensive side of the ball. We played pretty good today on defense, y'all. We played pretty good. Pretty good. Billings in the middle of the field, total seven, two solos. Max Crosby had a, himself a great day. Six with two sacks, five solo. Perryman was balling out. Six for five. Tackles for loss. Max Crosby, two. Perryman, two. Um, now let's look at Chandler Jones. He had five total tackles, which is a good play. Apparently, he's not rushing the quarterback as much. They got him in coverage. Uh, still a lot to be desired from Chandler Jones, guys. All right, Deron Harmon. Played decent. I can't speak for everybody else. I'm not a good defensive guru. Denver was hobbling without Jerry Judy. And we did a good job. We did a really good job in defense this week. Because we played Denver last time. 
And this week, let's be honest, Russell Wilson ain't the best. He struggles. So our defense looked decent. They looked decent. But, you know, let's give it up for Max Crosby. He seems to ball out whenever we play Denver. And Max Crosby is 1,000% effort. And you know how it is. So we got the dub. 22 to 16 in overtime with that big pass play where Devontae Adams jukes a player and Foster Moreau got down the field. Uh, they were saving those plays for overtime, in my opinion. They were saving those plays for overtime. All right, let's let let let's watch the the post game locker uh -huh. speech. Dub, dub. Josh McDaniels and Dave Ziegler hugging. Oh, we got through this week. We got a victory. We got a band aid to calm the masses. You really that boy? I know. There you go. There you go. Perryman goes to Devonte. What's up? You you the boy? You that boy? You that you boy? That boy. You that boy? You that boy? Hey, I'm a boy. I'm a Toys R Us kid. Uh oh, Josh McDaniels publicly hugging. And they meant it. Look how happy they are. That that shows you how intense it was this week or these past couple weeks on their emotions. That they they celebrate like this is the Super Bowl. I mean, it's sad to say. It's fun to watch. I'm happy for the Raiders, but it's sad as well. Whew. They can brush their shoulders off for a week or two. <laughs> Derek Hart. Hanging out with the defense. <laughs> they know he's the man. He's the leader. So that's why they're giving him his praise for that pass play and everything. He deserves it. <laughs> Derek Hart's enjoying it. Thank you, Devontae Adams. Hopefully Sunday is getting funner now. This is Sunday a fun day. Derek Hart's enjoying himself. Live these moments up, brother. And I'm not trying to be rude again. To, I just don't know if Derek is going to be the future of the Raiders. There's a lot of things in doubt and uncertainty ahead. Enjoy these moments. It started on Monday of last... He's cracking his knuckles always, man. He, he's nervous to speak. Look it at him. It started on Monday of last week. You had great resolve. You had great effort in practice. You prepared hard. I finally called a couple of good plays at key moments, and I don't think I did any trick plays. I don't think I did any razzle-dazzles. And you strained, okay? And it took, it took 64 wow. minutes. Yeah. He doesn't even know the math. <laughs> That's not a good sign for a coach. Where's A.J. Cole at? Come on, A.J. Cole. Yeah, that guy punted like a genius today, putting them in, 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 in tough field positions all day. This group, you should believe in yourself. I don't know if it's telling or anything. I'm just saying the only people I see around him are New England Patriot players. I'm just kidding. But I see Deron Harmon. I don't see, you know, Derek Carr right up there in the front row. I don't see Devontae Adams right up there in the front row. <laughs> They're just like, I, I want the cameras away. <laughs> but you would think they would be right up there to support Josh McDaniels in the speech, but they hear him talk all the time. So they're like, ah, great. More bullshit. That's okay, it. I'm just telling you, you just got to believe in one another. You got to keep getting better. We got to keep working at it. It's and better. Toe the line. A long season. <laughs> Did he just say it's been a long season? He's just admitting it got to him. Remember every week, oh, we're going to do the right thing. We're going to fix it. We got to learn how to win. It's been a long, it's, only, it's like week nine, ten. In terms of, you know, it's a week 11, but like 7 and 3, what is that? Seven, it's 10. It's week 10. It's been a long season. We've still got seven games left, a little less than half. <laughs> it's been a long season. At it, it's been a long season. <laughs> it's November. Yeah. It's November. Oh, it's Thanksgiving week. Oh, oh. Thanksgiving. Oh, they get ready for it. Is it going to be a victory Monday? Yeah. We got a victory. Ah! We got a victory Monday. Ah! <laughs> so 
Oh, thank God. Victory Monday means the Raiders don't have to come in to do meetings or anything on Monday. They get the complete day off. Normally, their days off are on Tuesday, so they get Monday off. They get Tuesday off. Uh, they, they have to come in on Wednesday. They have to come in on Thanksgiving maybe a little bit. But uh, it's good. It's good. You can see they're really, really happy. They deserve it. They got a big victory, but it's still a fucking Band-Aid. That's all I'm going to say. All right, and some people like that I decoded press conferences, so let's try. Let's decode the post-game press conference from Josh McDaniels. It won't be as funny as the last one because they were full of pain and nonsense, and you can make fun of pain. Uh, this one's probably going to be happy-go-lucky, so we might not watch the whole thing, but let's do it. Hard-fought game. Uh, they look. He took an X show. Whoo! You know they're. That's a tough team, and uh, <clears throat> you know their defense really does a good job of limiting your opportunity. Have you noticed McDaniel's wears the same shirt in every press conference? I'm just saying the one with the little circle on the line. Opportunities. Um, you know every yard you make is a hard yard, and thought they got off to a good start. You know Russell was really. Um, you know, I don't know how many incompletions he had in the first half, but it wasn't many. You know, he was hitting a bunch of them and, um, yeah, two. Yeah, so it wasn't many. So, um, you know, just a typical division road game, you know, and I'm um, really proud of our team. Uh, hung in there, you know, got the – You know he's happy. He got revenge, and we sweeped the Broncos this year because he was an old Bronco coach, remember? <clears throat> he started out like 6-0, <clears throat> and oh, <clears throat> and then – they faltered. Then the next year he came back, and he was like, what, three and nine? Then he got fired. Well, we're three and seven. <laughs> I mean, if he becomes three and nine, is he going to be fired by the Raiders? I doubt it. Ball back there with a minute and something left, and then we're able to make a, a couple big plays there with Keelan and Josh and uh, get down there, and Daniel makes the field goal, and then uh, finally. Yeah, let's talk about Daniel Carson, man. 57-yard long field goal to – his career high, he was balling out, bro. And again, we haven't had a lot of field goals in the past two or three games. I got Daniel Carson on my, all my fantasy teams, and he's had like two points. And we haven't went for the extra point. We went for two, you know. Get Daniel Carlson more involved, man. The A.J. Cole called heads, and we won a coin toss. I was actually watching the coin toss in overtime, and when they did it, even though we're on the road, I was thinking we should call tails because we're on the road. But I was like, no, let's call heads because, like, it feels like we'll get a win if we're heads, like if we're number one, like heads. You know, we're ahead of the pack. So I was like, call heads, call heads. And he called heads. Then I was hoping, make it heads, make it, and it was heads. I think for the first time all year. So, um, you know, and then guys made great plays. First time all year? <clears throat> How many times have we went to overtime? Once? Twice? in overtime and um, you know this team has worked really hard and uh, they got a great spirit about them and uh, really <laughs> they got a great spirit about them that you've almost broken you probably did break it really you know uh, proud of, of the effort that they put in this whole entire week um, you know locked out all the distractions and just focused on the game and <laughs> thought they competed really hard for for 60 plus minutes today <clears throat> Josh um, two plays in particular the uh, the pastor foster um, it seemed like he had been in blocking situations most of the game in that situation. Was that kind of like the right time to yeah, make that call? Yeah, it was a different – we hadn't run it before, um, you know, and I just felt like they would – they were they were focused. I mean, it took you until overtime to get your, your tight end to not block and get from out of the backfield to catch a pass. I understand that was the game plan. But a tight end is a weapon for Derek Carr as an outlet, as I spoke about on second and six. A lot of attention on Tay, as, as everybody does. And, um, you know, just you were hoping for a chance at a chunk play, you know, because, um, you know, in order to score uh, in overtime, you know, you're thinking you're probably going to need to have a couple, you know, chunkers in there at some point. And uh, Foster made a great read on the play. Derek, I thought, made a really good throw. And then Foster, you know, ran with it after the ball. But um, the offensive line probably needs
needs to be acknowledged. You know, they uh, Colton being out and shuffle Jermaine over. there to the left and then Thayer played the whole time on the right and um, I thought they did a decent job of giving Derek some time there especially in overtime. Is that the same on uh, Devontae's touchdown is that the same one same play basically as the touchdown earlier in the game? I tell everybody you know but no it was it was a good memory for us for sure. Derek um, I think the message. Relief out there, Derek, in that locker room how much of a relief do you feel for this team after all the emotions of last week and just totally different vibe in there? Yeah, yeah you know Paul is um We've been so close so many times. Uh, I mean, y'all know you've been watching us the whole time, and and we're a few plays there, a few plays there, and um, I think our guys learned how hard it is. You know, like this is the kind of effort and strain it takes. Uh, you know, Josh did a great Check. job of helping minimize, you know, certain things to help us as. A I need to apologize. I don't know what happened, but apparently my my microphone went out. Hopefully, you guys didn't miss too much of my reactions to Devonte or the coach. I apologize. Uh, my microphone went out. My apologies. The team and just to help us be better and, um, you know, and that, that's a big loaded question. I wouldn't write about it. You know, there's so much in that, you know, but I'm just saying, like, I think that we all found a way um, to play better, to do our job um, at a high level. And it won't be perfect. We're going to turn the film on. I'll be corrected. Taylor will be corrected. Everyone will be corrected. And, uh, I think that that's the culture that we want to, uh, you know, believe in, and it's culture that Josh brings. It's awesome, you know. Like he, he hasn't changed, and he won't change when we watch the film after this. You know, uh, he's going to be the same, and I think that's something that we appreciate. But I think it's something that guys are learning that, man, if I, man, if I really just do A, B, and C when I'm asked every week, man, we have a chance to win. And then it comes <coughs> down to just making the plays at the end, and um, that ultimately comes down to just do your job, take a breath, like Tay was talking about, take a breath. Yep. Situation doesn't matter. What matters is you do your job, you know. So when you turn the tape on, so I think um, the feeling in there is a result of so much, um, so much work, right? Our owner came out and said, "Guys, trust the process." You know, however he wants to say it. You know, that's how I, I'm, a, you know. Am Did he say our owner came out? Was he talking about Mark Davis? Um, the feeling in there is a result of so much, um, so much work, right? Our owner came out and said, "Guys, trust the process." You know, however he wants to say it. You know, that's. That Mark Davis came down. He didn't have to have a closed door meeting with Josh McDaniels. He came down to speak to the team. They showed him on the broadcast and he looked like a fool. Like he was looking in his wallet or his purse or whatever the hell it was. Oh, damn. Like in the fourth quarter, they showed him in, on TV. Oh, I, I'm a, you know, Embiid fan, so I always think about that, you know. But, you know, trust the process. You know, it didn't, it's not going to get done in one day, but hopefully we're taking steps in the right direction so that, you know, there isn't, you know, new players and new coaches every two or three years here. You know, you were trying to sustain something here and hope. Okay, now they're reiterating the facts. I, I think Mark Davis talked to everybody and said, look, you know, I'm finally done and I got to I gotta have belief and faith in Josh McDaniels and, and everybody moving forward to build a legacy. Uh, Again, I just don't know if that includes their car. I mean, a lot of things are up in the air, guys. A lot of things are up in the air. Hopefully, guys, um, see that man when we do those things right, that it leads to victories and feeling that way. Uh, so it felt like the um, the message this week was just chill and have some fun and play football. And you, you needed the drive to get into overtime and the drive to win it. Was that kind of a indicative of that? Just have fun, play football, do what you do best. Yeah, I mean. I've always loved those moments. Um, you know, you, the guys have been around so so long, been here the whole time with me. Like, I've always just, you know, that's what I dreamed of as a kid, you know. And, uh, 
you know, you dream of having a chance. We've had some chances, and we, we don't get them done. Sometimes we score, we don't get a two-point, and, you know, there's frustration and all that. But those moments is like, that's what NFL football is, what you live for. And yep. so, you know, when we got sure. in that situation, I looked <coughs> in, in that huddle, and you could feel it from everybody, you know, uh, you know, especially after we hit the end cut to Keelan. You know, we hit Josh on the big one. And you could just, from that point forward, especially when we got the ball in overtime, it was like, all right, guys, here, you know, that's the feeling, you know. And it was a result of everyone just doing their job. And a lot of credit should go to the O-line, you know, with having yeah. the guys around, Colton out, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, it could have been like, oh, no, you know. But no, like those guys stepped up. Carm and Cam had them ready to play, and they, they did a great job all day. What went through your mind when you saw Devontae uh, just break into the clear on that last pass? Ooh, don't overthrow it. You know, <laughs> honestly, you know, when I threw it, he kind of took like a you know, couple fast steps. And I was like, oh, shoot, did I just – you overthrew Keelan Cole or somebody earlier, too, in the game. Throw this out the end zone. You know, that was my thought. And, uh, you know, but it, it hit him in stride. And then I turned around to make sure there wasn't another penalty. Oh, and yeah. And I celebrated. So. That's how bad it has been. They have to, after any big play, they have to go, referees, please, no penalty, please. Oh, that's kind of how my mind went. There's been kind of a different energy in practice this week that the team is gelling in a different way. What would you attribute that to? And did you notice that as well? Um, yeah, I, I absolutely noticed it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think some of the things I talked about, I can't remember the game, but some of the things I said, um, some of the things other leaders have said, I think um, uh, we as leaders, all the captains, all the leadership you know, that meets with Josh, there's a good group of us. Um, I think our, our energy, our expectation, and the way that we just try and motivate, um, you know, I think that everyone on the team felt the same way. You know, it wasn't like they're saying this and we're doing that. Or did it. I think we're all moving in the right direction. Unity. It's all about togetherness, you know. Um, and when you have a unified group, you can do some special things. And I kept saying last year, like everyone you know, brought that up, the thing that made that team special was the unity in that locker room. And when the unity. Unity. U-N-I-T-Y. U-N-I-T-Y. That's a unity. U-N-I-T-Y. Some of y'all don't know what the hell I'm singing. Some of y'all do. That's how old we are. U-N-I-T-Y. U-N-I-T-Y. That's the unity. It's like that at practice. The energy is like that um, at practice, and you bring it to game day, right? Not just at practice. you got to do it on the game, too. Um, that can lead to some special moments like we just had tonight. Derek, you mentioned uh, uh, some moving around the offensive line. Colton Miller, those are some pretty big shoes to fill, literally and figuratively, with Jermaine and Luminar. It seemed like he was up to that task. Yeah, I'm so proud of Maine. Um, you know, if there's one guy, you know, uh, that gets, you know, jokes at him all the time from the old line and he jokes back, you know, if there's one guy, it's him, but he always comes to work, you know, and he always, you know, whatever you ask him to do, Maine play guard, Maine play tackle, play left tackle, you know, and, uh, you know, the confidence that he has and uh, the, the, the level of his play since he first got here to where he is now, I'm just so proud of him. You know, I, I need him, you know, yep. and I thought he stepped up in a mighty big way, you know, because you lose Colt Miller. He's one of the best left tackles in the game. Any quarterback, any coach is like, gosh, dang it, you know, but I thought Josh did a great job of schematically helping and in Maine when he was asked to be one on one, he he did a great job, you know, and I'm sure we'll turn it on. It wasn't perfect or anything like that, like everybody. But, you know, if he can play good football like that for us, it's going to help us so much, you know, going forward. So. Really proud of him, and I love him. I love him so much. How do you take this result in spring board of next week? I, I think, hopefully, it shows the guys in the locker room, like, guys, what we did in practice, that energy that we brought, the love, the care for the organization, the care for one another. If you bring that every day, this is, the, this is what we can feel like. You know, we got to listen to coach. Do your job. Don't worry about anybody else. You know? See, I'm, I'm not saying this is all accredited to what Derek Carr did last week when he came out and showed emotion. It definitely helped. A lot of you guys get on him. Oh, your quarterback should never show emotion. They should never be like that. Um, but when quarterbacks show emotion, normally it's anger, and they call out other other players or whatever. Then, you know, they come together, and they start winning. Like Aaron Rodgers did a while back. He's like, relax, this and that, and calls out players. And sometimes they get a big victory after. Derek Carr is the first one to kind of cry. Besides Terrell Owens saying, that's my quarterback, that's my quarterback. But it was good that Derek Carr did that. It added something to the team this week. It, and Derek Carr needed to get it out. 
So whether you like that he cried or he was emotional, I don't give a fuck. It's who Derek Carr is, and it was needed, and it was necessary, and it helped propel this team this week. It did. It did. The players saw that Derek Carr cared so much that he literally broke down at a press conference in front of everybody. Derek Carr showed his heart. They all know he had it, but they finally saw it. And it was good. It was needed. You know, uh, all those kind of things. I think, I think this was just like another moment of, see, if we do it the right way all week and you bring it to game day, you have an opportunity to feel like this. you feel pretty good when they threw the ball on that third down and set it running it? It did because I thought we'd have about a minute and ten. You know, you know, me and Foster were talking and he's like. Yeah, the Denver Broncos, man, they could have wasted the clock on that third down, but they threw it and they, they, they didn't convert. Stupid ass Nathaniel Hackett coaching. Hey, about a minute ten. I looked at you. Yep, yep. Time, no timeouts. You know, so you're thinking, okay, we got to stop them there. And thankfully, you know, they threw it. Um, I think it was roll out to the right, and you know, they threw it. And when the ball hit the ground, it's like, okay, here we go. You know, we got. I think it was 153 um, left, and you know that 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 in the NFL is a long time. You know, and yeah, so we had no timeouts though. We felt confident. Uh, we had to put a drive together. You know, um, they did some really good things. It's one of the best defenses in the league, you know, so it's not going to be perfect the whole time. You know, they're going to make plays too, but it was that moment, like, all right, guys, we got to put one together. And some guys like Josh on the pass, Keelan on the end cut, you know, Mac, you know, guys were stepping up and making some real big plays for us. Go big in and out. Can you take us through the pass to Josh, the one where you saw him without some guys were saving up? Or? Yeah, so I, I mean, I had, I had a certain read that I was going through, and then, you know, when, when Josh was one-on-one, -on -one, he, <laughs> he ran a great route, obviously. You know, he, he made a great move and was able to outrun the linebacker. Yeah. Um, and I knew that in, as I kept my eyes down the field, I knew what I had in the back of my head. Um, and then when I peeked over there, he, he won. And again, just trying to give him a nice ball to where he can catch and run. And, he, I mean, he almost scored. You know, it was really, really impressive. True. I was thinking Josh Jacobs should have went out of bounds when I was watching it. I was like, I don't think you can score, man. Go out of bounds. Uh, it all worked out, but, you know, he, he ran to the, what, the five-yard line? Uh, but I was like, uh, go out of bounds, go out of bounds! Because we had no timeouts. Anything can go wrong, but it all worked out. Thank goodness it worked out. Uh, when you guys got inside the 10 on the last time of regulation, yeah. they called timeout. It looked like you guys were lining up to spike. Did you, you have a fake spike on there? And how just The fake spike that I was talking about earlier. Like they're ready to go and want to do it, and then they, they stopped it by calling timeout. Yeah. I want to see what it said. How disappointing was it maybe to have I talked about this earlier. The mic might have cut out. You might not have seen it. But I, I was remembering that they did a fake spike, you know, when the Broncos called a timeout. So I wanted to see if that, yeah, what happened there. The 10 on the last time of regulation, yeah. they called timeout. It looked like you guys were lining up to spike. Did you, you have a fake spike on there? And how disappointing was it maybe to have something like that ready to go and want to do it, and then they, they stopped it by calling timeout? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, they called timeout, so at the end of the day, it didn't even, didn't even matter, you know. Um, you know, but we're always, you know, ready in those situations to clock it. Sometimes, sometimes if I know they called timeout, I'll act like I'm throwing it or, you know, that I try and mess with them too, you know. But sometimes if there's a penalty and I act like I'm running, I act like it's a naked, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I try and play the, the chess game too a little bit there. But, yeah. All right. Good. Thank you all. Yep. So he didn't admit it was a play call from him. They, he didn't admit that they were truthfully going for a, a spiked – you know, touchdown, uh, fake. Uh, he said, you know, he plays the chess game. You know, that he saw them calling a timeout, and, you know, he, sometimes he pretends to do it. That's good because if if, t if he was really doing it, if he admitted it was a play call, then other teams would prepare for that for the future show. That was interesting. All right, there it is. Uh, once again, I'm going to have to edit this video. My microphone failed, failed earlier. So I'm probably going to cut out some commentary, and I apologize. I had some gems in there, guys, but my microphone cut out, so I'm going to have to cut it out. Uh, so you're probably seeing an edited version. This is not live. Uh, I just wanted to reiterate, I made a video about a week ago on the five ways that Mark Davis failed the nation, and I listed, I think, four or five ways, but there was one big way 
that I forgot that he failed the nation that I forgot to mention and was that his hiring his hiring process is ridiculous he doesn't seem to hire in-house all the time you know like when 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 you need a new head coach or whatever he doesn't tend to hire from the staff that's been on the team for three four five six seven years he tends to go outwardly then they bring in a staff and they're on the team for three or four years then we need an interim coach or something and then you know he he brings in the interim coach from that staff and they play good like rich Bisaccia. and then he lets them go and he brings in a new person a new ringer and that is one way that in my opinion doesn't show loyalty to the staff I, it's just if every time you need a, need a new head coach or whatever, if you're not building staff and coaches into our system and into our scheme and uprooting them to a head coaching job or whatever, and you always go outside, breaking the Rooney rule apparently, but if you keep going outside, you're not building faith, respect, trust, loyalty. In this team and I know that's what you're hoping with Josh McDaniels now moving forward you know if we need another head coach or offensive coordinator that you can just give somebody a promotion you know whether it be a quarterback coach to all of a sudden offensive coordinator or what or maybe a head coach but those are mistakes you keep making and coaches that are winning and the organization likes or the players like specifically you let them go because they've never been a head coach and you, th you want them to have head coaching knowledge. Again, every coach should be hired from within. It's like the Madden legacy. You want to hire every head coach from the Madden tree. You get it? They hired assistant coaches. Those assistant coaches become coaches. They hired assistant coaches. Then those assistant coaches become coaches for the Raiders. It's an entire system. And you have failed to hire from in-house. You keep going outside of the norm, getting new people in and out, in and out, in and out. It's the same thing with players, basically. But that is a, one of the big ways I forgot to mention how you have failed the nation, Mark Davis, as an owner. All right, let's quickly go over the schedule since we're going to try to go on a playoff run. <laughs> Raiders are now 3-7 and seven with, what, like seven games left? All right, so we're playing at Seattle. Will we get a victory? We can compete with them if all else goes right, but I'm not looking at a victory. I mean, I'm not. I'm going to predict that a loss, but I'm going to try to be positive and say we get a victory, but whatever. It's going to be one of those games. Depending on what Raiders come out and how the defense plays, but, you know, that, you know, I don't really care about our final record. I just want to see improvement week in and week out. But we got Seattle coming up. We got the Chargers. They're a tough team as well. We got the Rams. I mean, they're a debacle. Hopefully we get a victory versus them. We got the Patriots. In the, uh, that's a Thursday night game, I believe, on primetime uh, versus the Rams. That'll be fun to watch. And we get Darren Waller or Hunter Renfro back possibly in four weeks. So that'll be, what, week 14 maybe versus the Rams. We get back Waller and Renfro. I don't know. Uh, for that primetime game. Then we got New England in the revenge game for Josh McDaniels. They're still a good team. They got a big punt return victory the other day. Uh, that is what, on Sunday night football? Look at the primetime games in a row, y'all. Like, there's a lot of them. One of them is a flex primetime game on Monday night. Uh, then we got the Steelers, 49ers, Kansas City. So let me just be honest. Again, the Seattle game's 50-50. Looking like a loss the way we've been playing all year. The Charger game, looking like a loss the way we've been playing all year. But we always play divisional opponents good. Maybe we squeak out two victories by the grace of goodness there. The Rams, again, we're going to find out who's the better of the worst teams. Maybe we squeak out a victory versus the Rams. 
Uh, the Patriots, Josh McDaniel should get a victory over Bill Belichick. You know he wants it. Maybe we get a victory. So that might be four in a row. Then Pittsburgh, we tem team tend to beat Pittsburgh a lot. Uh, maybe we get a victory. That's five in a row. But I don't see us beating San Francisco and Kansas City. Uh, so maybe we get on a run. <laughs> and, oh, we're in the playoff hunt. <laughs> you know, <laughs> around Patriot time and in prime time, we got a couple of good games. Because if we can get two victories going into Thursday night football and Sunday night football, and I think we have a Monday night flex game or something coming up, if we can get a good victory, a couple of victories in those games, you know, it'll bring ratings to those games and whatever. But I still see us losing three, at least three games out of our next seven. So that would put the, Ra the Raiders at a record of seven and nine. So let me just go over this real quick. Let me give the Seattle game a victory. We'll be four and seven. The Chargers, we get a victory, five and seven. The Rams, we get a victory, 6-7. and seven. New England, we get a victory, 7-7. Seven and seven. Pittsburgh, we get a victory, 8-7. and seven. Then we lose to the 49ers and Kansas City. Uh, so we end up, what, 8-9? and nine? That's what I predicted our record to be, 8-9, and nine, which is basically an 8-8 eight and eight team, which is truly what we are. That's just my predictions. But a lot has to go right for us just to be 8 and 9. A lot has to go right just for us to be 8 and 9. So we play Seattle. Do we get a victory? I don't know. I'm going to watch. I hope we do. I just want to see more improvement, and I want to see the team having fun. Let's make this a road trip of fun. Is the Seattle game at home? No, I think it's in Seattle, right? Sorry, I forget so quickly. Yeah, man, we had a lot of road games. We had two, four, we had four road games out of five weeks. Woo, that's a tough stretch. There it is, Red Nation. I hope you guys enjoyed this post-game review video. Sorry about the microphone problems where I had to cut out some stuff. But we got ourselves a Band-Aid from the pain for this week. And hopefully we're showing signs of healing. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. I love y'all. Hit that thumbs up, that like, that subscribe button. And I'll see you sometime this week on another Raider Football Talk video. And if I don't have one, because it means there's no drama. But more importantly, have a beautiful Thanksgiving for you and your family. I love you guys. God bless. Go Raiders. And let's have some fun. Regardless of wins and losses. Let's play Raider football. Let's become a family. And let's heal. Let's heal. I love you Raider Nation. I'm out. <laughs>